Of course, we still face the problem that even when research is clearly and accurately portrayed, that's either ignored or dismissed without foundation. This paper suffers from both. Despite being published in one of the world's most prestigious medical journals, few doctors I speak to outside of a low-carb sphere have even heard of it. And one reason I suspect it hasn't been widely shared and discussed is that its findings effectively demolish the argument that we should avoid saturated fat because it might increase our LDL levels. It found, in fact, that those with the highest LDL levels lived the longest. Much easier to pretend this study just doesn't exist. The thing is, this is actually a systematic review, which included every prospective cohort study available to answer the question of what happens to those with high levels of LDL cholesterol. It didn't involve any cherry picking of the data. All suitable studies were included. In fact, it ended up being 19 prospective cohort studies with over 68,000 participants. And collectively, the overwhelming finding was that individuals with the highest LDL levels live longer. In fact, 16 of the 19 studies found this relationship. The higher your LDL level, the lower your chance of dying. Let's now take a closer look at the data from the individual studies. Different studies are represented by rows with the four columns representing LDL levels. Basically, each column represents a grouping of 25% of the study population based on LDL levels. The left-hand column shows those with the lowest LDL levels and the right-hand column those with the highest. And the numbers represent relative risk of dying. Numbers less than one indicate a reduced chance of death. And if you compare the chance of death between those with the lowest LDLs and those with the highest LDLs, you'll note that higher LDL levels are clearly associated with a reduced chance of dying. This study, for instance, found that those with the highest LDL levels were 34% less likely to die than those with the lowest levels. This study finding a 47% reduced chance of death in those with the highest LDL levels. And as you look through all the studies, you'll note this is a consistent finding. But still some people reject this finding, claiming that reverse causality might be at play. The concept of reverse causality is basically that illness lowers LDL levels. And so that those with the lowest LDL levels simply mean those who are already ill. Indeed, a drop in LDL level in the last two years of life is well known in the literature. But this argument fails on three levels. First of all, the average period of observation in each of these studies was significantly longer than two years, and still those with the highest LDL levels lived the longest. Secondly, even when study subjects with terminal disease, heart disease, or diabetes were excluded, there was no change in results, not even a weakening of the findings. This study found about a 50% reduction in the chance of death in the highest LDL group despite these exclusions. And finally, even if we exclude the 25% with the lowest LDL levels, supposedly those with the chronic illnesses, and compare those in the second quartile of LDL levels against those with the highest LDL levels, we still see superior outcomes in those with the highest LDL levels. The fact is, the findings of this systematic review are robust, and dismissing or ignoring the findings is scientifically dishonest. 